Ralph here, and welcome to True Power Trumpet Fitness on this thrilling Thursday here in Connecticut. Life's good, guys. Life's good. Anyway, you saw the thumbnail. Overblowing. Now, guys, we're getting back to basics, okay? Monday was, uh, two, uh, Monday, Tuesday, what's today, Wednesday, whatever. <laughs> the last one was relax the corners. Yesterday, we talked about proper tongue placement under the thumbnail of relaxed corners, and this is overblowing. It can be the bane of anyone's existence, but you got to be careful. All right? All right? Haven't played a note. Let's see what we got, and we'll take it from there. Don't need no stinking warm-up. <clears throat> and I probably should have mentioned it because did you see how little air I was in taking? Now remember, little air does not mean little tone. I'm not going to walls down here, guys. And I told you, I've had a quantum leap in tone and power the last week, 10 days, two weeks. Can't put my finger on it. We'll get to that later. Overblowing. Guys, it can ruin everything. It can ruin everything. Now, I always put these pictures up and of Stanmark. And guys, look, the guy is a terrific trumpet player. Terrific trumpet player. Was, is, whatever. Okay? He held one of the most iconic lead jobs for the longest time and did a beautiful job. I'm not knocking him. Quite the opposite. Uh... I use him because he is very well known. People know his playing, so they have a frame of reference of what I'm talking about. Okay? And also, the fact of the matter is, I've said a thousand times, overblowing to a certain degree absolutely works. It can work. It absolutely can work. Look at Stan Mark. Now, I'm not sure if Stan Mark could play delicate in a quintet. I'm not, he was certainly... Um, consistent enough, but a lot of times, if you're not as strong as Stan Mark, guys, and you're trying to overblow, you have a good day, you have a bad day, you have a great day, the next day you can't play a note, it happens all the time, because when you are blowing the, op the lips open, the only thing left to do is to press hard, and once you start pressing, it's a slippery slope, man, it's a slippery slope, those double C's, I'm telling you, barely holding them. Okay? Now, I've also said before, what is easier to control? An absolute wisp of air, a sliver of air, or a tornado? You see what I'm saying? I, I, I'm, I'm um, exaggerating to prove a point. I do it all the time. But it is just easier to control a small amount of air than it is a big intake. Now, As again, as I referenced a couple minutes ago, I am not talking play with a tiny little sound. I am not. <laughs> Guys, the tone is as big as a house. And did you see how much air I took in? <laughs> now, when you first start with this little amount of air, you may get caught in the middle of phrases with, with not enough in the tank. But you'll be surprised. Once you get the compression going with the tongue and everything, 
you're surprised how little air can go a long way. All these long flowing phrases of, you know, Pines of Rome and, and, and Mahler and all this sort of stuff, guys, they're all there with just a sniff of air. Now, what does that do? It allows you to compress more. Guys, when you are blowing huge amounts of air, a la Arnold Jacobs or Claude Gordon or whatever like that, first of all, you're working harder. You're just playing working harder. Stan Mark was working too hard, okay? Second of all, it's just you're, you're blowing everything you're trying to do open. You're blowing the grip open. The tongue doesn't stay. The minute the tongue lets go, you, you're tight. You're tight. All right? Little air and compress. You can keep the tongue and the, and the lip locked in there. You can get even more tone and more projection with the centered, pure, compressed tone as opposed to the big, wide, blatty, big, wide, blatty spread tone of the overblower. All right? Now, again, there is no chance that I could, with one mouthpiece, just go from instrument to instrument. You've seen me do it. Get the chair out of the way. I haven't had the E flat out in so long. Very, very few people can do that without changing mouthpieces, number one. You can do it with the 1SB. No other mouthpiece I, I, can, I can guarantee. And no warm-up. Now, the first couple of notes were not great, but it collided right in. Guys, your average symphony player would have to play half hour, 40 minutes of long tones and everything on the new instrument with the new mouthpiece and everything. You can't do that if you're overblown. The smaller the trumpet, you just, you just can't overblow a piccolo. It sounds terrible. It sounds absolutely terrible. Now, as I said, I'm not saying you can't play with a big tone on a piccolo or anything else. Maurice? Maurice, Maurice was the best at compressing air. Not the best, but what, one of the best. He could get an enormous tone, the notes pop, and he was just sniffing. It was just no, no work whatsoever. And guys, at the end of the day, that is what less air, less air, no air does for you. It makes it easier. As I said, it's so much easier to control a sniff, a wisp of air, as opposed to a, um, a um, tornado. Guys, to play a double C, I am working so much less than Stan Mark. God bless him. I'm not knocking him. I'm not knocking him. Quite the opposite, guys. I'm not doing that. So stay, save your trolls. I'm not doing that. I'm just telling you. I'm using less air and I'm working less. Alright? Alright. Relax the corners. Keep them relaxed. Keep them relaxed by a firm, compressed tongue and lower lip. Little air. That's true power, baby. All right? All right. Talk again tomorrow.